the Shatshanks not believe Knock Knock. Poked him with words and spears and torches. Bite him, kick him. Who be survivor now, huh? Knock Knock, me, always me. Hail the Mashtu. Goblin tied to the pole has seen better days. He's covered in filth and a wide variety of burns, bruises, claw marks, even a bite mark or two. Yet he's smiling wildly as if in triumph. Greet and meet heroes. Seen how I dealt with them? They were like, we be smashing you. And I snarled back, no, I be smashing you. And the beast was, ah, and bite, and bite again. <laughs> That's it. Who are you? I be the ear of Lamashtu. No, 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 not that. Uh, I, I be the seer of Lamashtu. That's who I be. Her favorite of many. Uh, I bring her message. She protects me, sends me offerings to eat and whatnot. I be important, very important person. What makes you think you are the seer of Lamashtu? I had dream. Lama told Knock Knock in her big white arms, rock me, let me suckle her skulls, pet my head and sing. Who smartest? Who bravest? Who favorite? Knock Knock, that's who. And the next day, proof. I found nest, untouched with eggs. It be a sign. And bigger sign? Lama just saved me right before your eyes. Why did they want to kill you? Ah, uh, it, it, it be because of that half-head shaman. Bees bite his back. He be crazy. Something get in his way. He be snarling and poking people with fork. <sighs> he huffs and grumbles and shivers as if trying to dodge invisible pokes and prodding in his memories. What do you know about the incursion of enchanted bees? Beasts? Lama be their mother, like all beasts. But she not birth them out this way. No way. Half head shaman lie to make people fear him. Shatshank stride around all puffed up. Everyone bows. Even King won't bark a word against him. He says God has sent us these beasties to answer his prayers. He even made us uproot village. He says there is thing of goddess nearby where beasts come from called womb and he calls me a blasphemer what should i do with you kin they deserve a knock across heads all of them yet hmm, better not knock you see big mother idol Shatshanks hide in her shadow so can beg and whine for Lama to poison, stab, bite, kill whoever hurts goblins. Don't make Lamash too mother mad. Let them live. Thanks for the information. Hey, hey, where are you going? Wait till I untie myself. I go with you. We heroes, we march together. The shaman fled. I bet your hide he come back for revenge. He hates you, Longshanks. Hates your guts. Mine too. Let's follow him. Then kick him hard in his guts. Teach him a lesson. We kick the king in his guts too while we be there. You want to go with me? See for yourself. Heroes need muscle, right? Also need brain for plans. Someone with pretty face to charm everyone. And needs leader, heart of the group. I can do all of that. Uh. <laughs> Why not, Jonas? <laughs> Onwards for the adventures! The odd ventures. What are you even? Hmm. I have not the slightest idea. What are you? A rogue. Okay. Okay. You are a rogue. You can... Very good. Yes. Very good. Um. Knock knock. Wait. 
Uh, knock knock level 9, right? Make a save here. Uh, level 9. Knock knock. A rogue called Knock Knock. Okay. The character can no longer be flanked. This defense denies another rogue the ability to sneak attack the character by flanking her unless the attacker has at least four more rogue levels than the target does. Wait, her? Wait, what? No, he's a dude. Oh wait, he has two cookeries. Ugh. Shock dagger. Hmm? And that's why is the damage so two to ten when equipped? Why? Why? Why does this do so much more damage? I have to check this his traits. Really bad. Really bad damage. I though. One to five on it. One to eight. Oh, that's better. Bit. Bit better. Okay. Uh, as a rogue gains experience, she learns a number of talents that aid her and confound her foes. Starting at second level, a rogue gains one rogue talent. It gains an additional rogue talent for every two levels of rogue attained after second level. Rogue cannot select an individual talent more than once. So, yeah, can no longer be flanked. Dexterity? Uh, trickery? Stealth? Oh yeah, we don't have anyone with uh, Knowledge World anymore. Our team. Oh. Any observer? Gains a bonus comet feed plus stealth. Having gut. Skill focus? Late sense. At third level, a knife master is so skilled in combat involving light plates 
that she gains a plus one dodge bonus to AC against attacks made against her with light blades. This bonus increases by plus one for every three levels to a maximum of plus six. Sneak attack. If a character can catch an opponent when he is unable to defend himself, effectively from her attack she can strike a vital spot for extra damage. The character's attack deals extra damage in time her target would be denied a dexterity bonus to AC, whether the target actually has a dexterity bonus or not, or when the character flanks her target. This extra damage is 1d6 and increases by 1d6 at later levels. This additional damage is precision damage and is not multiplied on a critical hit. The character must be able to see the target well enough to pick out a vital spot and must be able to reach such a spot. Sure. What does he already know? Double slice? Your offhand weapon while dual wielding strikes with greater power. Benefit at your strength bonus to damage rolls made with your offhand weapon. Normal, you normally add only half of your strength modifier. Mm. Two weapon fighting? Your penalties, penalties on attack rolls for fighting. With two weapons are reduced. Uh, the penalty for your primary hand lessens by two and the one of your offhand lessens by six. Normal, if you wield a second weapon in your offhand, you can get one extra attack per round with that weapon. When fighting in this way, you suffer minus six penalty with your regular attack or attacks with your primary hand at a minus ten penalty to the attack with your offhand. If your offhand weapon is light, the penalties are reduced by two each. Unarmed strike is always considered light. Yeah, dead. Improved two weapon fighting. You get a second attack with your offhand weapon or bait at a minus five penalty. When wielding a light weapon or any other weapon that can be used with weapon finesse, you can choose to take a minus one penalty on all melee attack rolls in combat maneuver checks to gain a plus one a plus two bonus on all melee damage rolls. The bonus to damage is halved if you're making attack with an offhand weapon. Okay. Bewildering injury. If a rogue deals sneak attack damage to a foe, he can also debilitate the target of her attack, causing it to take a penalty for one round. This is in addition to any penalty caused by a rogue talent or other special ability. Will it take minus two penalty? Target takes a minus two penalty on attack rolls. Hmm? Okay. Okay. I still don't get how he gets so much damage just from those simple cookies. Why does he get so much damage just just from cookies? Just regular ass cookies. Quaggy. Unikram arms quaggel. Dann mal viel Spaß im Lurk und viel Erfolg. Miss Quaggenova. Warum kriegt er so viel Schaden von Kukris? Stimmt denn nicht mit dem? Goblin. 
Goblins are a race of ugly creatures with a destructive and voracious nature that makes them almost universally despised. Weak and cowardly goblins are frequently manipulated or enslaved by stronger creatures that need destructive, disposable food sources. Those goblins that rely on their own wits to survive live on the fringes of society and feed and refuse in the weaker members of the civilization. Most other races view them as virulent parasites, proved impossible. These creatures stand barely three tall, their scrawny humanoid body dwarfed by their wide, ungainly head. Goblins prefer to dwell in caves, amid large and dense thickets of thistles and brambles, or in structures built and then abandoned by others. Of what? Thistles and brambles? The fuck is a thistle? Thistles. Thisteln. Brambles. Gestrüpp. Brombeergestrüpp. Thisteln und Brombeer. Wieder was gelernt. Okay. Rogue proficiencies. Huh? Nest training. Weapon finesse, bonus feet. Finesse training, cookery. Uh, dexterity modifier instead of a strength modifier. So much more damage just from the finesse training. Hmm. Maybe I should rethink about that. And get uh, my other party members finesse training as well. Yes, I'm still here. If I can boost their manage uh, damage that much. So, <clears throat> what are they doing here? Huddled behind the statue of Lamish II, a badge of goblins casts angry glances at you, muttering threats and curses. One of them, apparently the bravest, steps out, shaking his fist and howls at you in a quavering voice. You don't dare c c come closer. We catch one of your kind before and Lamish II c c cursed him a terrible curse. She do same to you. Hey! Knock knock pulls your sleeve. They might be right. They be bunch of stupid, loud, smelly and greedy worms. But if you kill them right under the statue of goddess, she might get offended. He points his finger at the corpse of Goblin killed. See how goddess punishes the plash fiends. You run now or she get you too. They now want mercy. When prisoners back them, they listen. Ha! Yeah, now I'm scared. What will Lamish do? do? Send another owl bear for us to skin? Lamish do or not, you will be you will be responsible for anyone these vermin kill or maim. Do not press your luck. Cleanse your lands of uh, cleanse your lands of these monsters. Uh, find the beat, I'll spare you life. Uh, where do we actually want to go now? 
Yeah, okay, we took care of that, and now? Attend the council. We scouted the whole barony, visited goblins, dispersed the cult of Lamashtu, and even participated in a real vivisection. Now it's time for everyone to meet and discuss what we've learned about the source of the disease. Okay, then we leave. Let us be gone! To the capital! And I still have some cookies there in my store. For little knock knock. To make just even more damage. A lonely mill. This distant mill. Wait. This distant mill seems remote and unsafe. While townsfolk and villagers can rely on their walls, neighbors and guards, hermits seek in solitude always risk running into trouble, be it from harsh elements, greedy robbers, or things stranger yet. Now we've got my curiosity. We take a quick look, okay? Just just a quick look. Oh. While passing the windmill, we saw a curious thing. Goblins were squatting in the shadow of the building, doing what goblins do best. By passing the windmill we saw a curious thing. Goblins were squatting in the shadow of the building, doing what goblins do best, stuffing their faces. They had gutted sacks of flour and were spreading the wealth. Some fried pancakes on an open fire, others threw pieces of dough into a bubbling pot, making some kind of dumplings, yet others just rolled around in white powder, shoving clumps down their throats. All of them, without exception, were guzzling ale from kegs nearby, spilling it over each other and bellowing songs. Uh, bellowing songs. When they spotted us, the merry goblins, possibly due to the ale, stood their ground. Instead of fleeing, they started to whistle and wave, inviting us to join their feast in response to the Baroness. Charged into battle. Chaotic, neut and chaotic neutral smiled, muttered why not, and took place near the fire. I had never been at the goblin party before, but it proved little different from the late night academy reveries. Using their crippled speech, the floor drenched merrygoers explained the miller, invited them to his house, told them to take whatever they wanted, and was polite enough not to ruin the fun and left soon after that. The food tasted as foul as to be expected, but ale was passable, so soon all of us were tipsy. After these little troublemakers unmistakably recognized Baroness as our leader, they offered her to pass several tests to become a part of the tribe. For the first test they demanded her to deal with a terrible beast, the dog, 
Goblins and dogs, well, they don't get along, neither with horses and, uh, well, almost any animal that doesn't sting, bite or hiss. The Baron's task was to steal the miller's dog's food plate, so she laughed and accepted the invitation. The dog proved rather big, but lazy and quiet. It was slumbering in the kennel, uh, paying no heed to the nearby party. The dog's plate, covered in bones, laid before the kennel. The Baroness took the plate, ignoring the dog completely. Noticing someone trying to steal its plate, the dog opened its eyes. It raised its head, gave a half-hearted bark, then laid its head back on the ground and closed its eyes. After the goblins praised the Baroness for her brilliant performance during the first test, they announced it was time for her to taste their ritual drink, a really nasty thing called Jackwort. At first glance it proved to be ale, until we saw the dead toads bobbing in the barrel for flavor. Judging by the tots, a toad's color, they were poisonous. After the Baron saw the brew and smelled it, she... <sighs> ...bravely filled the keg from the barrel. The barrel smelled horrible. The goblins were scooping the ale in their dirty hands. And when that proved not enough, they dipped their entire heads in, fishing toads out the barrel with their teeth licking the toad's ale blistered skins and tossing them back in. The Baroness drained the first keg to its dregs. Succeeded in a constitution check. The barrel smelled horrible. Yeah, I drained the first keg to the dregs. I dropped dead just having smelled it, but Baroness drowned uh, down the horrific beverage without even wincing. Clapping their hands, goblins brought her another keg. She drained the second keg. Succeeded! Drained the second keg. The Baroness turned pale, drops of sweat appeared on her forehead, but she drained the second keg without complaint. But those little bastards seemed determined to send her to an early grave. They were already handing her the third cake. The Baroness drained the last cake. Succeeded! I bet her stomach was lined with dwarven steel. After the third cake of the horrific smell as well, the Baroness grunted, wiped her lips, and smashed the cake over the nearest goblin's head, making others laugh and applaud. Now be third test! The goblins howled and cheered. It seems they decided they had tortured the art of cooking enough for the day. So now they thought to abuse the art of poetry instead. They were going to sing a song and Baroness was of offered to improvise and add the missing lines. She answered, why not? Accompanying the song with percussions, percussions where everything the goblins could reach, sticks, branches, forks, pants, they started to croak out the ribbon as well as they were able. Goblins sing for you this song, how be smart and fit and strong, how be the goblin best. And Lamesh do be impressed. And Lamesh do be impressed. Goblins fight and goblins bite, goblins steal and goblins hide. But the best is goblin skill. Is to kill and kill and kill. Is to kill and kill and kill. Manticore deep in the wood eats goblins for food not good. So as not be his prey. Not to be his prey. Do a belly dance. Scream like hell and run away. Goblin king be strong and wise. Manticore he want full size. But we better eat and drink. Uh, 
hardcore, he won't full size, but we better eat and drink. Belly dance. Do we stay here till next spring? So a toast to Goblin King. So a toast to Goblin King. Goblin sang the song to you. If you be a goblin, you always heed these simple rules. Also, never skip your schools. <laughs> and your belly will stay full. After the song was over, the goblins laughed and applauded. Finally, the song was over. God of poetry achievement. Okay. My ears almost bled from the rhymes. But the Baroness kept calm. To the goblin's utter joy, she finished the song and got a standing ovation as a reward. Finally, the foot and ale were exhausted. Casting sad glances at the empty sacks and barrels, an older goblin, uh, elder goblin sighed and started a speech about how he remembered the happy old times when they were full. But no one seemed to be listening. As the old goblin rambled on, another goblin, slurring his words, invited us to the next party in the village and, after many false starts, gave us directions on how to reach it. A dubious honor indeed, but a useful bit of information. After that, the sodden merry ghost stumbled away, burping and licking the fingers happily. Okay. Why is it not cleared? We did everything we could here. There's nothing interested left in this location. We can't go back there. Well. Okay, I think that was just another way to get the location of the goblin village. We're going to fight. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We are going to fight! <laughs>